podcast. We'll have to start from the beginning. Welcome to the Fifth Sacrament podcast, where we talk about uh, aspects of the game that we really want players to help us chime in on. And and we'll spend some time talking about some news of the game as well. Uh, I don't imagine we're going to have so many things to, to ask you that we're going to be able to fill every episode with just questions. So we'll evolve it and utilize what we need to as we go. Uh, we'll let Sinden make the call on that. How about that? Since he's early morning in Germany, what is it right now? So it's seven here. God, what's that put you at? Six? Maybe eight over there? So I can't remember if it's 11 hours or what. Anyways, okay, so today we're going to be talking about DPS meters, not whether or not they belong in the game, because they're going to be there whether you like it or not, and we're going to revisit player merchants. Before we do that, um, last week, just as a refresher, we did cover the tier 11 through tier 15 rating. If you didn't get a chance to check it out, um, head on over to last week's if you click on the highlights or you can go over to the, the YouTube page and, and check it out, Sacrament Game. Um, we also talked about crafting mentors. So go over to the, the website, check out the, um, where are the crafting mentors? It's further down. A lot of people have been asking questions, so... Uh, in a week, you, you can see how stuff kind of moves around. Um, head on over to the website, check some stuff out, watch the videos if you haven't seen them yet, find out, you know, a little bit more about what the systems are about and ask any questions you've got. Seriously, there, there are no bad questions. You can be the biggest troll on the face of the earth. There's no bad questions. We manage Reddit, not all of Reddit, but we manage to survive on Reddit. So you'll be fine on our forums. That said state of the game I always like to open up with a little bit of information about um, where we're at in certain things so our flyover video update is we are sourcing the information over to Wicked now who is going to take that and convert it over to uh, a data package that can be utilized by one of our other developers um, where she can now place all of our assets so our trees rocks and and other general terrain items into the flyover and prepare the the ultimate recording at which point we'll record it and then we'll send it over to our sound team so they can apply some some sound effects for you guys to enjoy so we are working on that that is moving again um, right now the the only real hurdle there is bandwidth issues uh, wicked's utilizing a satellite connection and it's it requires a little bit more bandwidth because it's a massive project just creating the world itself is, is rather massive um, so he's he's got some some ways to go around that, but this weekend he's having a celebration. So he's not working this weekend. And power to you, brother. Um, the forum life, as you can see, it's starting to pick up a little bit. We've had actually uh, two or three individuals who have who have asked quite a few questions on the forums this week already. We absolutely appreciate your activity on the forums. Absolutely love the questions. Again, I don't care what the questions are. If you want to ask me where babies come from, I'll give you a troll answer. Because guess what? Eight years in the Marine Corps and a whole bunch of hip pocket classes. You think I ain't never been asked where babies come from? You have to do better than that. Social media life. I'm glad to say um, that we have picked up a few people that can help us out in certain aspects of social media. So our, our Twitter um, Twitter, sorry. Our YouTube page is being ban managed by Jello. Uh, he's also diving into the Reddit for us. Thank you very much, Jello, for that. He's also helping us set up an RSS feed for the podcast. For those of you that don't need the video, don't want to be here for the stream, just want to hear my uh, uh, voice. I, I don't know why you'd want to hear my voice, but for those of you that want to hear my voice, it'll be available on an RSS stream for you to. I assume download or even stream from work. I don't, honestly, I don't really know how that works. I let the people who deal with that kind of stuff deal with that kind of stuff. So, um, and that's, that's all we've got for the state of the game. I believe I can't imagine anything else that needs to be added. I need to get some WD 40 cause this chair is getting worse. It's only a year old. It, it should last a lot longer than that. All right, so let's let's head on over to our discussions, huh? Let's let's get some good good stuff going, because you guys are really here about what we're what we're talking about about this game specifically. So let's 
let's move past the state of the game and past Wicked and his amazingness and all that stuff. And let's let's move on into the meat and potatoes of these podcasts. So what we're going to be talking about today, the first thing is going to be the DPS meters. So again, this isn't a question as to whether or not DPS meters should exist in the game. And in the game, they're not... People will refer to them as DPS meters. They're just going to be um, proficiency meters, or or what's what's the word I like to use? I like to use. You see all the type ups I do. It's uh, if efficiency. Yeah, roll efficiency meters. So it's essentially what it's going to be. It it'll be the same thing as a DPS meter. It's a typical DPS meter, but it's going to measure so much more. And if you've ever used a game and utilize ACT, I'm sure there's a couple more out there that that go really in depth. Um, you've seen them cover. You know, tanking statistics like damage mitigated, damage avoided, uh, healing received, stuff like that. Healing, um, healing aspects. So it, it's going to function the same way. We're putting a swing on it because no game that I'm aware of has really given. A, Act had a capability where you could count how many reses were performed and the type of res. So I was a dirge in EQ2 when I was using Act ACT um, Advanced Combat Tracker and. It told me how many overall reses I had, how many of them were single target, and how many of them were, were group reses, or, or I think it was six-player reses. It's been a while. I don't remember the exacts. But. So what we want to do is, unfortunately, it doesn't really tell you the effectiveness, right? Because it just tells you how many times you cast it. How many people did I res with an AOE res? Was it a sufficient amount? Was it useful? Was I just burning a res to burn a res? You know, there, there are questions of efficiency in there, and that just pertains to a res. When we, when we start talking about the other two roles, because you can't just hold DPS healers and tanks accountable, you need to be able to have everybody, and it's not just about accountability. So it's a word I'm using right now, but it's not just about accountability. It's about growth. It's about performance. It's about bettering yourself as a player, which is one of the, the core functions of this game. Why we set up our progression system the way we have is not just to challenge players, but to challenge players to be better to give them an environment that doesn't go from, oh my God, easy to, ah, so freaking difficult, like a lot of games do. You'll go from, you know, leveling up, which a lot of games is, is solo content, right on into raids, and the difficulty scale is just absolute. You know, it's 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 a, a, a freaking jump off a cliff, basically. So what we're, we want to do is we want to help you find your your initial point of resistance and give you the potential to see it, see how it flows, and evolve, and get better and better as the tiers go, instead of just leveling all the way up at the same point, never really knowing if you carry, never really knowing if you're outputting, never really understanding your class, uh, and getting to raid, and then, I mean, you guys have seen it, I've seen it, I've been there, and not too often. I might have had one or two abilities I didn't understand, uh, but you, you've seen players who get the rating and they don't know what half their abilities do. They just spammed one ability the entire time and, and that was it. And that's really how easy the game was. But you get to the raid scenario and you need more out of them. So this game is really set up in that way to push it. And these meters are set in place to help you understand. So it's one thing to know that you suck or know that you're excelling. It's another thing to know why. It's another thing to see where you're excelling and where it is that you're struggling. Or, you know, let's say EQ2, when I started out as a dirge, I was horrible. I leveled up a um, Dark Knight. It's called a Dark Knight in EQ2. Man, they got so many names. Death Knight, Dark Knight. I leveled up that class um, with my brother. And when we got to raiding, they didn't need any tanks, but they did need another body. One of the the main tanks had a dirge, and I was, you know, I, I love bards, absolutely love bards. I didn't realize a dirge was a bard when I had selected my classes, so I just went with the tank. And it, it was different for me. I mean, I only had to obtain one level. I had to get a whole bunch of AA, but I was carried through all those AAs. I didn't really, you know, earn the AAs. It was just a fast grind up. I had rating experience, a lot of it, and a lot of game knowledge is what they really understood. So I didn't understand any of those abilities. Without a act, without a few other key items like uh, being able to track my, my swings, and without a player who could show me his parses and his what he's doing, I would have never improved as a dirge. Or not never. It would have taken a lot longer to improve at that class. And I became, um, 
well, arguably the best one for that raid, and one of the one of the really good ones on the server at the time. Um, and it was it was because we were able to communicate these things through actual numbers instead of oh you have to do this and you have to do that and there's a little bit of you know faith there do i trust this guy does he really know what he's doing how can i tell he knows what he's doing how can i tell he's not just winging it or getting lucky there's there's a lot of guessing and, and feel that goes into when when somebody just tells you but when you can show somebody when you can when you can stand side by side parse it out and say all right do you see what i'm doing compared to what you're doing do you see the differences in ability priorities and what abilities you use and all this stuff happening and it it just kind of it stands out far better it's a lot easier to retain and for people like me who need the information the data it's a lot more reliable so the dps meters in this game are created for that now we know people are going to burn them people are going to abuse them I get it okay for those of you that that are going to complain about it i absolutely understand you're not you're not wasting your breath by expressing your frustration okay because it frustrates all of us i, I hate the guys who sit there standing in reds absorbing a buttload of heals and topping the parts because they don't avoid damage and they're not doing this or that or you know they might just be really good but they they really kind of sore winners they like to rub it in people's face it's one thing to be um competitive it's another to be an absolute douchebag about it so uh, we get it there are going to be those people you can't prevent those people and if we never built systems in a game because people could be douchebags utilizing the system we would never build this game so we're not going to start now and we're not going to go about it so the questions when it comes to the dps meter is do you want to let me let me pull up the dps meters and this is brand new poll. All these ones I show you are going to be brand new as long as I haven't forgot them to, forgotten to uh, update them. So the questions are going to be about control and visibility, really. So the first question is raid leaders and group leaders. Should raid leaders and group leaders have the capability to turn off a meter in the middle of a fight? Okay, and essentially the way this this goes is you know if, if you're in a raid fight for those of you that are raiders you're going to know what i'm talking about as i walk through this so if you're in a raid fight and you get to that 20 percent or that five percent depends on how long it takes to, to kill the boss um each each boss is going to vary uh generally 20 percent is a pretty good number for them them long long fights five percent is a is a second number where it happens twice but so you get to 20 percent and you your entire raid force you're, you're excited because your entire raid force just spent 80% of that boss's health. So the last, I don't know, 13 minutes working the mechanics, getting everything to click, you're adjusting if somebody dies. I mean, your raid force is on point. 20% hits, and, and the DPS are very good for this, but sometimes other players are, are, are good for this too. They just kind of zone. They see 20%, they see the finish line, and they go, right? And so essentially what this is, is, is a way for the raid leaders at that point to, to say, all right, when the boss is 20%, I want the DPS meters to shut off. So the DPS stops staring at the numbers because they're looking at the numbers their entire fight. I don't care what anybody says or, or how well they're playing. They're still glancing over at their numbers during a the fight. They want to know, am I performing? And it's an important thing to know for 10 minute plus fights. It's absolutely important because if you're sitting there for 10 minutes not performing, you're going to you're going to want to know and if somebody tells you that you're not performing and you believe you are you're going to want proof and you're going to be really pissed if they can't provide it so having it up for that portion for the first 80 percent i don't really think there's an issue but as a raid leader myself 20 percent five percent at one of those two points i'm going to want to shut it down and really it's it's going to be me feeling out the raid finding out when it is that my dps zones i've got a dps right now um he's He's getting a lot better at not zoning, but he was a classic case zoner. He would not stoner. Uh, he might be. I don't really know. Um, he, that's a lie. I know. He, um, he would, when we were playing ESO, for example, and it wasn't necessarily his fault. ESO was, was very easy to zone in. I mean, it was a burn it as fast as you can game. So he would, uh, so long as the mechanics presented themselves, 
absolutely focus burn the boss and i had to yell at this guy a few times in some fights to you know lay off the boss and go after another target or um hp sensitive fights where you need things to line up uh it it's all about um nary and f great example for those of you who played eso nary and f uh 35 will go to a sword and what you what you didn't want to have is a whole bunch of ads out during that phase um, I mean, unless you were going for the achievement for four ads out, which we already had a billion times over, so we didn't care. But um, what you what you have to do at that point is manage your DPS, not just DPS, but manage your DPS. And as the the raid leader, group leader for somebody like like that individual, uh, it would be very easy if he's sitting there DPS and all of a sudden I shut off that meter so we can't see it. It's going to click in his mind as he's looking over at that meter, that eye's flying up and it's gone and he's going, what, what in the world? Oh, 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 crap. All right, I need to back off. Lanham's tell me to back the hell off until it happens again. And then I hit a button, I can turn it back on at any point, you know, and, and it, it becomes more of a cue, a way to help keep people, snap people out of these, these burn it right now mindsets. Uh, because there's nothing worse than wiping at 5% because the DPS stood in a whole bunch of shit because they thought that they could burn that last 5% faster than they burned the other 95%. So it's, there's there's always that that struggle that exists between how much power should a raid leader have and how much power uh, is too much power. Um, personally, in this regard, and I, I voted for the top one, only raid leaders should be able to turn turn off the um the dps meters during the fight so the, the question at that point comes to some of you group leaders right groups because of the vastness of the game the way the game's set up you're going to see a lot of a lot more pugs than you typically do in in mmos there's a ton of open world content all of the progression flagging systems are open world content every single piece of it uh we will have instance dungeons where groups that are pre-made that don't want to have to you know compete over any any npc resources um they can go and just do that stuff but a vast majority of the content is going to be open world so you're going to see a lot of people in group you know lf cc lf1 dps must have i don't know all four slots or something like that yeah you know, I, I don't i don't know what the the abbreviations and nomenclature is going to be at this point but you're gonna you're gonna see all this in in zone chats as people are traveling from zone to zone. Um, I, we're not we're not looking at doing a global chat unless it's it's uh, personalized channels. In EQ1 they have personalized channels, and it was just something that they would post on the forums, and then everybody would join that channel if they're looking for you know groups in 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 certain areas. So I imagine there might be some you know uh, tier 12 LFG. Uh, where people could join and they could see that chat from anywhere. Um, but so you, you're going to have a lot more pugs, which means a lot of group leaders that don't know a lot of people coming in. A lot of people that don't know the group leaders coming in. There's a potential, a huge potential for a lot of group leaders who are very controlling. Uh, some that are just absolute jackasses uh, who are going to troll people who know that, you know, DPS want to see the meters everybody else isn't really all that concerned about their meters uh, unless they're testing something for the most part D uh, healing and tanking they're not they're not really monitoring the meters all the time um, CC and support I don't know yet we, we don't know there's never been a real meter for CC and support uh, so when it comes to you know maybe he's had the, the last two DPS were, were assholes or or sucked or kept zoning and dying on boss fights um, the the fear at that point is that they're just going to treat every DPS the same. We don't, we don't really want to encourage that. And that right there is such a major issue that it is something that warrants a question for whether or not, whether or not a group leader should have that kind of specific power. Um, I don't necessarily think that it shouldn't be in their hands, but I voted for just raid leaders because I think it's far more advantageous for the raid leader. The group leader's not really going to need to be able to turn the DPS meters off. There's not going to be as big a scenario as a raid uh, where it takes, you know, 15 minutes to take down an entire boss encounter. Uh, w with the group fights, it'll take five minutes for a, a boss fight. You'll have some some mechanics you'll have to compete with. But it's not, I mean, it's it's not 
as long. It's not as endurance based. It's it's really just about quick survival. Who can kill who first and survive at the same time at that point? Do you need to shut off meters at that point? I don't feel so. I could be wrong. Absolutely wrong. I don't really know. I haven't had a chance to test it out in the game, so maybe you do and don't. Who knows? But we leave that up to you guys to decide. So the questions are, do you think that that raid leaders and group leaders should, should have the capability to turn on and off the DPS meter for people, not disable it, but just turn it off the screen, you know, remove it from the UI. The second one is, should these DPS meters be visible to everybody? This is a question, it's, it's a rather fair question. So we're gonna have the DPS meters, no question about that. That doesn't necessarily mean that everybody needs to see these meters all the time, right? Um, and some people are, are gonna say, yes, everybody should be able to see the meters all the time, otherwise what's the point? Well, you can still share the data, but it gives a little bit of encouragement to players who are maybe testing new stuff or they know they're not up to speed and they're, they're learning and trying uh, as, they're, as they're reaching their challenge points. Um, being able to, to kind of hide it while you're learning gives some of these players a little bit of feel good, a little less pressure on their shoulders, right? Uh, and and it's, I don't think it's that big of a deal that it needs to be such a thing that we, we make a decision on it. Um, but that is, it's a conversation point to have. It's a great counter, counter, counter point to, to bring up is should players have a little seclusion on that and share it when they want, or should it be open to everybody at all times? If you're in a group with me and we're parsing on a boss, should I be able to see your numbers? Should you be able to see my numbers, whether you want me to or not? So that's the second question. And if you look at the options, there's only raid leaders should be able to, and everyone should be able to see the results. Raid leaders, yes. Results are to me, and I can share them if I want to. Uh, I did put one down here for, for some of those guys. I'd rather you didn't have them, but my vote doesn't really count. There's that, slash Eeyore, because, you know, nobody wants to play with me. So, DPS meters. If they got any questions, go ahead and fling them my way. If you've got any questions at all about DPS meters, Shadow Knight, that's what it was. Thank you, Sinden. Shadow Knight. I don't know. There's so many names for the for the same idea. Ugh. So. Um. Okay. Sinden brings up a valid point here. Uh, he says the biggest problem for me in the DPS meter is the DPS meter depends on gear, to a degree. Um. Our gear doesn't work like like most games and what i mean is you're not going to pick up a, a piece of gear and it's going to just automatically be, be best in slot you need to put these runes in the gear to make it your best in slot if you're a dps class that likes to use a mixture of poison dots and, and disease dots you're going to gear your gear for that uh if you like to do direct damage and no damage over time you're gonna you're gonna craft your your gear for that if you've got a set of abilities that you really like to use in a, in a combo order you're going to set up your gear to reflect you know if i put this dot on the target and then i hit them with assassinate it should do you know five percent more damage or something i don't know um the gear still has a lot of skill base in it and yes absolutely people can just go up online and, and look up you know how to put these these pieces of gear together that's always going to be the case. You can never really end it. No, no way that I can see that you can end it. So I can't say you can never really end it. There's somebody out there who's, who's really smart, who's looking at this right now, laughing his butt off because he figured out a way for like five years and he's just not telling anybody. And that's fine. Or he's going to create an MMO around it and it's going to be the only gimmick that, that's there and then the rest of the game is going to suck. So to you out there with that information, bring it on over because I'm interested. But primarily, you could have the best gear and still be absolute shit DPS. You can't say that the other way around. You can have shit gear and still be absolutely amazing DPS. You might not be the highest DPS in your group because the other person that's absolutely amazing DPS actually has good gear, but you're not going to be so far behind that people are going to kick you out of the group because you don't have, you know, awesome pieces of gear. Um, you're not rocking 18, 18s or, or whatever the case may be. 
uh, and that idea is like 18 pieces of gear with 18 room slots, which makes you a tier 18 raider, right? Um, <laughs> anyways, um, so while gear does play a role, and gear will always play a role so long as gear exists, anybody who says it doesn't is, is retarded. It's not such a huge dynamic uh, for the shorter fights, for the five minute duration fights and the, and the trash fights that you're, you're being forced uh, to play the gear game in order the DPS. You will have to play the skill game in order the DPS. Your, your, your gear is never gonna make your shitty DPS better. Never gonna make your shitty DPS better. I'll tell you that right now. The other way doesn't really work the same way as that. Your gear makes your outstanding DPS even better. So there's there's a little bit of balance there with the gear. And we think we've, we've done an absolutely excellent job. And obviously we need to test it like crazy. That's everything. Um, but we, we've we really thought out this, this system. Uh, and, and some people have, have kind of compared it to a, a card game where you build your deck based on how you play as a player. And the cards in your deck are there to support you. You don't play the cards, the cards support you. And then you just take your opponent on. So that's the idea there. Luck for getting good gear. So, I mean, this isn't gonna be a Korean grind fest, right? It's not gonna be like a 0.1% drop rate or a 1% drop rate. The drop rates are going to be rather fair, rather. So think EQ1 a little less, a little less tedious than EQ1, because the challenge for us isn't about grinding the gear out. You will, you will absolutely take time grinding your gear out and leveling it up and and, and playing the the treadmill. Absolutely, there's no question about that. I'm not going to tell you that won't happen. Um, is it going to be a lot of luck based? Not really. Once you get that initial piece for that slot. You can literally go anywhere with with all of that. You'll a high skilled player will be able to get all the way to raid tier in blues and, and purples. It's not it's not anything crazy to achieve. You could take a green item and and bump it up to purple. Patience, obviously. If you're farming solo, it's going to take a lot longer than if you're farming in a group. Um, and it that goes into the itemization and uh, and evolution of the gear system. If you haven't seen that, definitely go check that out. Uh, we can actually spend time talking about it during one of the podcasts if you guys want to go over uh, exactly how we, we've we planned out this gear system. I have no problem doing that. But it's not as heavily based in luck as, as, any, as other games. The minor RNG is whether or not a piece of item is going to drop. Uh, and if you kill a boss, a piece of item is going to drop. There's no question about that. And with, with the gear set up, you can literally take any piece of gear you want. The the only differences are for the open world content, um, they the bosses will drop, uh, will have the potential to drop an item that will benefit a certain element a little more powerfully, but only in in the first uh, first slot for the combo ability and bonus slots. And, and all of those three slots are very important for how your abilities function, what they do, and, and what happens after the ability's done its effect. Uh, that's it's really the only part that's got the RNG aspect in it. When it comes to upgrading your gear, you can play the RNG if you want. So it's, a, it's kind of a chosen RNG system if you want, or you can show a little bit of patience, upgrade the gear with 100% chance by using all of the same uh, item levels so if you're trying to upgrade a blue to a purple you would use four blues to upgrade that and it would take some time to get four blues or your group works together like a lot of raids do uh, your group works together and they pick one person to receive you know the next five blues so that they can get the one and upgrade it and then they move on to the next person and they they cycle like that and sure it takes time but you're powering up your entire group on an even level nobody gets left behind it's a little more rewarding at the same time uh, we used to do that in Terra, EQ1, EQ2. Uh, EQ2 wasn't as big with it, uh, but Terra and EQ1 were huge with it. And that's that's essentially how we're going to approach the gear and, and how players deal with the environment. A lot of the gear you pick up, you're probably going to wind up selling too. So.
DPS dummies. Absolutely. I hate games that don't have dummies that you can test on. Um, we're actually uh, Wicked. I asked Wicked about... So DPS dummies are great for DPS, but what about for tanks, healers, CC, and support? Because those are very important for the fight too. Um, I asked Wicked about it, and he said he doesn't see an issue um, creating dummies that read all of these items. So healing dummies are, are easy to set up. I think EQ2 had healing dummies. Uh, tanking dummies would essentially just be a hostile dummy that you can engage it and then you can you can test your 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 basic capabilities on it um, it'll do an attack every so often and you can see how much mitigation is happening at that point uh, with a tank it's all about how much block each block is mitigating not how much can a mitigate with block in a minute uh, that that's always up to tank skill and and ability prep time um, you can do the quick math on that in your head once you figure out how much you're blocking for every time you block. Uh, CC and DPS or support. So support would would essentially, the idea is to cast a buff on a target and know how much more damage that target's going to do. And it's going to read that as though the target is doing damage to, to something else. So support with their, their their DPS meter, their efficiency meter, isn't reading any damage they're doing. It's reading how much damage other people are doing, or how much more healing, or how much more mitigation, or how much more effective other classes are performing because of their buffs. So with support, that one's really easy to put up on a dummy. And then CC is kind of the same, right? So you would put, CC would be the crazy one, because you'd have to put like four or five uh, dummies in one spot and you would work on cycling different types of, of debuffs and CC types and snares and all this stuff and essentially the training dummies would read scenarios that are being broadcast into your your meter and your meter just translates the data for you it's all simple stuff um, the only real difference is, is you know just like a training dummy with DPS when a fight happens the training dummy doesn't move, the boss moves a lot. The training dummy doesn't do AoEs, bosses do AoEs. So it's the same setup no matter what, what role you're going for. So there's nothing so significant that we can't create training dummies for all classes. And we would definitely have training dummies. And yes, this loot is going to be smarter. It is not that it really needs to be in this game. Um, but you're not going to, if you're not running any necros, you're not going to see any offhands for necros drop. Uh, well, not not, because there's always the the market aspect and the the um, giving it to an alt aspect. So we don't want to not have it ever drop. The percentage chance for items is the the roles or the the classes you actively have in your group. Those have the highest chance of dropping, and then the next is everything else. So everything else will drop. And it's, I mean, we're not talking like a 80%, 20% chance to drop. It's not going to be that crazy. Um, it's more like a, you know, 70% chance for, for smart loot for your group and then 30% chance for non-group related. So it gives you a lot of market feel out there. So while you're picking stuff up, you could pick up a very rare necro charm or amulet or something um, for, for a pet. I don't know. And, and it, you know it sells on a market. So your group vows to sell it real quick split the currency and then move on with with what they're doing or you can roll on it sometimes some groups used to do that in eq1 with the uh like the drake skins i can't remember what they were called uh, but they used to sell for 25k when 25k was essentially half of what most people had so that was before they destroyed the market all right so next Right, there you go. If you're in a full group and there's no assassin in it, we don't want you getting 10 assassin runes in a row. That should never happen. I won't say it won't ever happen. It should never happen. And if it happens, you need to report it because we need to fix it. Um, we we want to stay on top of things like that. We want people to report these kind of things. We don't just want you guys bitching about this shit in game because it frustrates us too as players. We want you guys to know that you can come and you can say, hey, look, I was in this damn dungeon we ain't got no freaking assassins, but the damn assassins room kept dropping for assassinate or other assassin class abilities. And it's pissing me the hell off. Um, if you're out there, you should be able to get rewards for yourself, for your group. You, you should be able to go after that stuff. So there's a little RNG, but we've, we've altered the way the RNG flows. 
All right, so next is one that we discussed. I believe this was week one in in player merchants. So a quick recap on player merchant merchants. Uh, I say quick. It might wind up being a lot longer than quick, and I apologize for that. Uh, if you haven't figured out now, I love to talk about this game. Love to talk about this game. I'll talk about this game forever. So I apologize if I get lost in loopholes. Um, loopholes. <laughs> So, player merchants, essentially the idea is um, we do have auction houses in the game. They're not global auction houses. They're faction-based. Um, and they they work a little differently. There's one, the tier, uh, the raid tier one, you build your faction up with it, and it can function the same as a global auction house. But nobody else sees the global auction house on that. You can sell to the three primary auction houses, and then you can buy from the three primary auction houses and and that's essentially how that works so it's a modified global auction house but it has the appearance of a global so we'll just refer to it as a global auction house now uh the the tier 11 one almost works like that you can see from all three markets but you have to pick every time you put an item up you have to pick what market you want to sell that item on so you don't have to go to all three markets you do need to have the faction um, to, to sell on that market. You don't have to go to the physical location for all three markets. You can sell from that one location, uh, but you can only sell it on one market auction place. So the, the auction houses kind of evolve as you get further into the game and you have to earn these things. These aren't just given now. So that's, that's the basics of the auction house. The idea for, we want more player interaction in the world. We want to bring more players if I had my way, this world would be like, like Sal, right? SAO. I would trap all you motherfuckers in the game and you would live in that bastard until you died. Uh, I'd, I'd come to your house and, and make sure that you're being, you know, fed and, and whatnot. Your mom's cleaning your poop, poop bucket, um, and all that nonsense. But I, I would get rid of all these pesky little NPC characters and have players run all this stuff. I mean, we got enough players playing video games to do that, but the reality is players aren't always online to do that. Uh, one player slacks off, another player's not always there to pick up the slack. So we can't, in reality, do that. But what we can do is we can provide systems where players can do these things uh, without removing the old systems. And maybe one day, maybe one day, we'll never need an NPC uh, selling goods on, you know, fifth street or whatever maybe one day it'll be players doing the bargaining and whatnot at that point uh, buying stuff out of your inventory to give you some money for it and then selling it to other players and making trades out of it um for right now what what we see as a as an evolution to the auction house um is so eq1 used to be able to buy bags and set your player up on a stand in the bazaar he had to stay logged in and players can can search the entire bazaar they they can find you interact with you buy the item from you you come back and you you know you sold 600k plat worth of items um while you were sleeping it was a cool system um there was another game steel was telling me about uh i can't remember what game he said it was but another game where you could essentially set up a little stand uh, so it worked the same but it was a little bit more visual you would set up a stand um, write whatever you wanted on like the, the banner on the stand by penises here or life sucks with lemons. I, I don't know. Uh, that's probably some crap I'd write. Um, so you set up these stands and players could interact with the stands and see what you've got. We wanted to take it a step further. So a lot of players, especially when, he, when ESO came out, a lot of players wanted to be active merchants on the streets inside of ESO. And it's a tough system to create because you have to worry about a lot of phasing things and and available space versus virtual space and what you risk um, what how much players are willing to give for immersion and how much players are willing to to settle on and say you know what in order to work it has to happen I don't mind seeing you know, I step into this this shop and knowing that I can click on a button on the top left corner of my screen and go into phase 337 where the guy is selling the sweet apple pie that I want before raids because it boosts my stats or some shit. So 
we we're, we're we're creating this player merchant system where players instead of instead of players interacting with NPCs players will perform the task of an NPC so they'll go out and they'll set up signs throughout the world uh, just little signs not cluttering the world spe specified locations um, you know outside of an instance dungeon outside of uh, some raid scenarios or whatever the case may be uh, they can set up signs that says, you know, looking for this potion, um, head over to Shadmar District uh, Phase 38, uh, buy them from me for this amount of gold each, something like that. So you could you can see these signs throughout the world. Uh, again, not littering, so it shouldn't destroy your immersion. Um, and and we absolutely believe that when it comes to this. Players are more than, than willing to to be accepting of walking into a physical shop and then having different phases of it based on people want to buy the spot. One thing I hated about ESO was they put it up for bids and and people found ways to absolutely control certain locations uh, with their with their bids. And so it wasn't ever a competition anymore. So people stopped bidding on certain spots and you found that those certain spots, you know, if that guild quit, or if that guild wasn't playing the game for the next week or two, um, it was an empty stall, just vacant. Reality is that would never be, if, if, if it was just all player run, right? If this was real world and we were out on Main Street doing market days, uh, if you don't know what market days is, you're gonna have to look it up, I'm not explaining it. Uh, if you were out on Main Street doing market days, the second you saw a vacant stall, you wouldn't even see a vacant stall because you're constantly talking to the event coordinator about who's coming, who's going, when there's going to be an opening, what I can do, how much do I have to bribe you to, to put me next to this guy and this guy. You, these people are willing dealing with these, these event coordinators. These people know when these stalls are opening up. A stall goes down and another one goes up instantly. I mean, it's instant. You blink and you're missing the entire thing. You don't even realize. Sometimes, and I've seen this, I've actually done this, um, we'll trade, we'll have the same tables. So instead of having them break their tables down and us having to reset our tables up, we'll just say, hey, leave those ones there, take our tables. They're the same exact thing, same model, same everything. And, and you'll... I mean, the, the whole teardown setup is, is only halfway there. Um, so in reality, players are, are moving in, or people are shooting and moving on these things really quick. In a game world, it doesn't really translate that well, right? There's a lot of reality elements that don't transfer into the game world. So we've kind of um, given up trying to figure out a way to, to create an in-game event coordinator without some type of favoritism. Because once you put somebody behind a keyboard and give them too much power, they nine times out of 10 are gonna absolutely abuse that power. We've learned this over the last 15 years. So the the phasing, the instancing of a specific shop is, is what we feel is gonna be ideal. That's in town, that's also in the communities. So in your, your general communities or your guild communities, uh, somebody can, instead of building a house on a plot of land, they can build their own unique looking stall. Um, so the phase in that regard is going to be what community you go to. You know, if, if I had that same sign, um, apple pie, head over to Eridar community phase three, I'm on plot 35. Uh, people would know where to go to, to get that. Plot 35 wouldn't phase as you wanted it to. You'd have to go to the primary phase and then walk over to plot 35. So there's some uniqueness there for that, but there's still the phasing element with the communities. And... I find it really hard to believe that players aren't going to want that to exist just because there's a phasing element. After seeing uh, phasing initially was a really like scary idea. People didn't really like the, the sound of the idea. So people didn't utilize it all that much. But after seeing how fluid it makes games run, people have become a lot more open to the idea of phasing. Aeon, huh? Okay. So... So the player merchant is the idea of giving players the power to do live sales, live interactions and live haggling instead of interacting with some chicken dude behind a counter that says the same thing every time you, you interact with them, even though you interact with them 15 times over a 30 second period. 
Hey, have you seen my wares? Hey, have you seen my wares? Oh my God, dude. Yeah, I seen your wares. Shut the hell up, man. I swear I'm going to kill your mom. I swear. More human interaction is the key in reality. Not less, more. And there are people that are going to want, they're not going to want to interact with that. There are people out there who are not going to want to interact with that, and that's fine. But there are a lot of people who do want that interaction. A lot of role players, a lot of PVEers. They want to come back in town. Minute, they're out killing monsters. When they come back in town, they want to see other people. They want to see an economy. They want to see people running around, having jokes, playing music, um, giving each other the bird. And I mean, they they want to see these environments. This. All of this stuff is has been gone, and this is one of our attempts to bring it back. So, player merchants, we we explain it here uh, for the most part. Um, there will be a type of, of setup in here where you know if a player is not in this shop, he he can hire an NPC to manage the shop for him while he's offline, so that his shop doesn't completely shut down. Uh, that that wouldn't be ideal, and players would hire other people. Maybe even hire somebody to to come in and work for you for a certain wage, depending on how many items they sold. So, you know, if I set up a shop, um, call it Lanham's Corner, and then you know, ask my buddy Brummett in to come sell stuff. In EQ EQ one, he was he was the salesman. I used to give him like 30% or 50% sometimes based on how much the item was. Um, to go sell it for me because he kept his computer running all night. And I mean, the only reason I ever made money in that game was because of him. So in reality, in that case, uh, you know, I'd hire somebody like him who was good with haggling with people who had great people skills, who loved to do it. And he, you know, get a 10, 20% profit, uh, margin of my profits. And it, you know, it works. So there's a lot of ideas that, that can come into this. So head on over to the site, vote on it we've got nine votes which is really good considering um you know how small we've got i think we were sitting at 125 people registered on the site i was gonna click up here to to verify but uh, i'm not going to show you guys like all my passwords and stuff if you want to just send me a message i'll i'll surrender my life to you i'm just kidding i won't screw you um so yeah so that's player merchants revisiting it's a very important subject. Um, I believe it brings a lot of depth into a game. And it, more than that, the MMO video games are all about evolution, a, a slow, constant evolution. And if you never evolve anything in your game, if you just create the basic, simple necessities of you know whatever made WoW popular, um, or if we just recreated EQ1, people would like it for a few months, maybe even a year. They'd walk away. There's nothing to evolve anymore. There's... The next game to come out is just going to be another copy of that. So we want to inspire anybody coming out after us. Um, look, people love these systems. Come and come and evolve these systems. People are going to love you for it. So right now, everybody's terrified to make an MMO unless you've got a million dollar company backing you up, uh, who's essentially really telling you everything to do anyway. So it kind of sucks. But building an MMO is a huge endeavor. It's scary as shit. I'd be lying to you if it didn't say that. Um, but we've got the greatest resource there is to have. You guys, players, to tell us exactly what the hell we're doing wrong and what the kind of things you guys want to see in the game. So I think that is a very underappreciated resource, and we're going to use the shit out of you. If you don't like being used, don't come here. <laughs> if you have any questions, please uh, light me up right now. Craven Ashley will... They will send you send your questions my way. Do you guys have any questions that I, I haven't seen? All right. I think that is it. All right. Uh, one more thing. So when you're coming here, I know this is a little intimidating. So we've we've made an effort to kind of clear this up for you. When you're looking for this later. Go to news and announcements, and right here, we've got, uh, you know, if, if you missed episode three, we've got the episode sitting here. You can click on it and go through. You got the link to the video, and then the link to the relevant threads. So you don't, you don't need to go perusing everywhere on the website in order to find them.
There is no such thing as a dumb question. Yes, there are stupid people that ask dumb questions, blah, blah, blah. It's, you know, it's witty wordplay. But reality is there's, there's really no such thing as a dumb question. Uh, unless I'm sitting here telling you the answer and you continue to ask the question, it doesn't make the question dumb. That would just at that point make you dumb. Um, so don't do that because I'll let you know that you're being dumb. But yeah, absolutely. Questions, questions, questions. I don't care if you want to know why some puppies have blue eyes and some puppies got green eyes. Adora will let you know all of that stuff. She's great with, with puppies and eudemology. No, nah, I don't know what the hell they call it. I just make it a words. I saw another big word today. I haven't retained it yet. Uh, it was a tortoise joke. <laughs> but yeah, so if you've got any questions, I don't care what it is. But you got to understand. Got to understand. There are... 63 million gamers roughly out there right now if you think you're the only one with that question you've lost your mind that might be i don't really think it is that could could be considered a dumb thought the reality is somebody's got that question and they're terrified to ask it because they believe it's dumb right because you go on the the forums post the question and all of a sudden all these trolls are, are knocking you for it oh can't you read don't you know what a lore is blah 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 we will shut them little bastards down in a heartbeat fret you not our community we want it to be mature and when i say mature i don't actually mean mature what i mean is we want you to feel like you can express yourself and drop a few f-bombs here and there what we don't want is a hostile community if you're looking for a hostile community you can get the hell out of here because it ain't gonna happen uh if you're looking for a community where you can openly express your frustration and you can say fuck you sacrament you're screwing this game the fuck up I'm going to ask you, I'm um, first say, I love you for swearing because it, at this point in time, it really takes balls as an adult to swear on forums. Um, but honestly, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you why you feel that way. So I hope you're capable of giving me insightful feedback when I do ask that. Otherwise, shut the fuck up. If, if you're not going to tell me why I'm screwing up, what good are you? you? You're not, I mean, at that point you're considered a troll. You're just insulting for the sake of insulting. I'm not interested. But if you say, fuck you, Sacrament, you're fucking this game up. And I say, why? And you say, the raids are supposed to be harder. This is supposed to be this. We'll sit there and we'll go and test this. I'll take you into the game and we will figure this out. Okay? Because it's important that the players are pleased. Not that the whiners are pleased or that the players are catered to. That the players are genuinely pleased. That the catering is a short-term enjoyment giving you something that's going to make you want to come back that's going to make you value the things you get and the character you've got that is going to please you so yeah i want to know if my raids are too too easy i want to know if if progression to tier 12 is too difficult because of the way that the progression fights are laid out uh if you try to tell me that <laughs> that the fights are too simple and somebody goes in with one ability on their bar and all white gear and downs it, I'm gonna laugh at you. I'm, I'm, I mean, come on now. Um, step up your game a little. Learn a little. Don't just assume that everything is too hard because you haven't taught yourself how to play a video game. Uh, I'm, I'm specifically speaking about an event in ESO. Um, Steve and Adora know. They know what what we're talking about there. No Ogre Mar chat. I don't know what that is. Tindaval the Great. Kid you not. Uh, Sorsha? Was that the name of the mob? Like, the first biggish mob on the uh, the Ebonheart pack side, the, the chick that turned into the, uh, the snake type things. I can't remember what they're called. My memory is bad right now. Um, I've been having a really fun week, so I haven't been able to focus on a lot of these things. But, so, a lot of people claimed and claimed and claimed that this fight was impossible. So, Ten went in, way before it got nerfed, in, I think, three pieces of white gear. I think it's the three piece you get when you start the game. And one ability on its bar. And killed it with weapon attacks. Never even used the ability. And all white gear. And beat the, snap, the crap out of her. Dosha, there you go. Yeah, you got you guys know what I'm talking about. If you're coming to me saying that that Dosha is too hard to beat, and I got video evidence of a guy who's not even 
he's not a hardcore gamer. He's your typical typical skilled gamer. He's your core status gamer. Uh, and he's destroying her without using anything. Me and you are going to have a talk. I'll, I'll give you some tips and some hints. And I might even point you to the guy's video. And I want you to learn how to fight that. I don't want to nerf that because you can't get, I'm not going to nerf that because you can't, you can't get it down because you're, you're, you're too spoiled not to take the time to figure out how to play your class, play your role. No, enjoy the game. Get out there and earn something. And that's what we're here for. Yeah, she was a Lamia. There you go. Man, my brain, I'm telling you what, my brain's getting worse, guys. You guys aren't here for the Sacrament Podcast. You guys are here to watch Lanham's brain deteriorate into nothingness. And I love you for it. Um, so anyways, uh, Podcast 5 will be here. If you want to share it with any friends or anything, uh, that's another thing for us. It was really nice because now I can just link this particular thing to uh, you know Reddit. and Well, not Reddit. My, my guys can link it to Reddit. Uh, but I can link it to, to Facebook and Twitch and all that stuff. And everybody's got all the links they need right there. They don't have to feel overwhelmed trying to go through. I mean, right now, it's not that much, right? We go into uh, general discussions. There's only 17 discussions in there. 17 discussions is enough to go through first off. But we're, we're what, a month and a half, two months old? Imagine how many freaking discussions are here. Go over to Tamuel Foundry and click on the freaking general discussion tab and look how many freaking things in here. It's easy to get lost. So we don't, we want to make this aspect, the ability to obtain information should be easy. That should be the casual setup that we're catering to you. I got no problem with that. Information is important. Information is what you need. Hell, the whole DPS meter system based on information. So anyways, all right, I'm rambling. I'm going to say my, my goodbyes while you guys are, are going through your, uh, your hate for this game. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I don't see anybody hating on this game. All right. So make sure you subscribe to our website, sacramentgame.com. Type it in, go look it up. You can even look up uh, new MMO Sacrament or Sacrament MMO on Google. And, and at this point, it's it's the first thing to pop up. It started as four and, and mama, we made it to the top. Just kidding. Definitely not the top. You're pretty much typing in the entire name. So um, go over to sacramentgame.com and subscribe to the page. You want to find out all major events coming up, Kickstarters, any new video releases, any, any major things coming out, we'll be releasing them via newsletters. Uh, all of our information releases uh, are coming out via newsletters. Actually, I need to test that, and we need to make sure that that's functioning on a full level uh, before we get to the Kickstarter phase, so we'll be, we'll be testing that. Uh, if you are subscribed, I do apologize. Over the next few weeks, if you receive a couple emails that seem like spam, it is just a testing phase. It will not be consistent like that, so... Bear with us for a minute while we while we make sure we've got that down. Absolutely. Um, while you're on the page, go ahead and head over to the forums. I, when I have it like this, it doesn't show that button. Forums at the top left. It is a third-party forum system. It was far easier to, to go with that. So we went with a third-party forum system. So you will have to register to that as well. You can use the same login password. It doesn't matter. Um, volunteer forum. On the top of the page is also a donate button. I'm not changing the name of the donate button. I don't care about the idiots on Reddit. If people don't understand that a donation is not just money, if they don't understand that a donation is also time, talent, all of that stuff, support of any kind, that's on them. <laughs> Crave is the hero. Um, the, on the donate button, uh, we have absolutely disabled, we made sure of it, I verified, triple verified, we've absolutely disabled the capability to donate money. Now, you guys were smart because I told you we're not accepting that. You didn't even try to, and I love you for it. Um, I appreciate those of you pretty much yelling at me. I got cussed out already. Honestly, I'll pull up the email sometime. Uh, I'll, I'll have to make sure I... <laughs> I black out names and whatnot, but I kid you not, I got cussed out because somebody couldn't contribute money to the game yet. So uh, that actually inspired me, made me feel really good. I'm not going to lie. So anyway, on that page, on the donate page, there's also a section to donate your time, your capabilities. It doesn't matter what you do. If we've got something 
that we need done, um, we can absolutely do it. You don't have to be a developer. You could be, you know, um, we've got marketing guys that we'd love to get in on here. Um, lore guys, artists, concept artists, 3D animators. If you, I, I'd love to get, you know, a little intro, like a five second clip for uh for all this stuff that that i do here i don't know how to do it i looked up how to do it i'm not even trying i don't even have a software i'm not buying a software i already invest like four or five hundred dollars a month into this this game right now so um it's licenses and, and stuff shit and that's that's the the cheap end um so if you've got a talent that could help out with his game accountants marketers uh, social media you don't have to be a game coder it's not the only i mean it's a full run, full blown business we we fill the void for all that stuff so if you've got talents you, you'd like to contribute we absolutely appreciate it and we will we will love hearing from you um the next is to like us on facebook and twitter they link that in chat um all major updates go through facebook and twitter and our forums uh and then be sure to be here next week as we talk about, I don't know, because I don't have it written out. And that's fail on me. I usually have it written out. I had something down, and then I realized I really didn't like it, and it went against the system we had. So that, that went bye-bye real quick. Uh, so tune in next week as we talk about insert words here. We need an editor now. Anyways, later, guys.